Hello and welcome to the tour report from Secret Golf. Well, after last week's Mexico Open, which was almost like um, a repeat performance of last year, however, the winners swip swapped with Tony Finau taking the trophy this year. We're on to the Wells Fargo Championship and Elk after you know, a, a weaker field, to put it mildly, last week, um, apart from the kind of two star names who were there battling it out down the stretch. We're on to another one of these big designated events at a huge golf course. So it's going to be a really big week on the PGA Tour. Yeah, I watched the last nine holes in Mexico, uh, the battle between Finau and and Ram Finau was up all day and, and really on Sunday did everything with his chipping and putting. I think the, they commentated was six, six missed greens, six up and downs, and was just able to hold Ram at bay. You know, he, he said it after it was over, Finau that is, that he's got to be careful with Ram because he, know he, he knows he's coming at every moment. And uh, yeah. Ram has that certain rattlesnake uh attitude when it comes to biting somebody you know he loves it he loves a great comeback we saw him do it at Kapalua against Morikawa this year come from nowhere to win right at the end but yes we're moving on Diane to a, a, a huge course at Quail Hollow this one to me is a lot easier to handicap than a lot of others Diane because now we move to a big course <clears throat> we've got all the best players playing um, it takes a specific set of skills to play quail hollow because the course is so long and big and the greens are complicated and undulating so all the best players finish up winning at quail hollow we know that rory mcelroy is the favorite place of his justin thomas uh max homer's one there there's a bunch of guys that can really hit the ball well and the reason that they do well there is that they are able to navigate getting it off the tee in the position we saw the president's cup we saw you know, these long finishing holes at Quell, uh, long par fours. So it's all about hitting the ball and getting up onto the green and, and sort of bogey avoidance. We need a very high golf IQ this week, and I'll explain what that means during the show. Yeah. Um, you say all the best players are playing this week. Uh, some of them are skipping it. We've got 21 of the world's top 30. And the two notables that are missing this week are world number one and number two, John Ram and Scotty Scheffler. So Rory McIlroy is the highest ranked player in the field. Um, it's kind of an interesting one because when you know we heard about these designated events, it was kind of sold to us that the top players were all going to come together for these big events. And we saw Rory miss the RBC Heritage the week after he missed the cut at the Masters. We know that he got fined. There was a big hoo-ha. Uh, Rory's actually not doing a press conference this week, which is kind of unusual. So, I don't know, a little bit of a question mark over McElroy's head. But with Ram and Scheffler and some other big names skipping this week, you know, this whole designated event thing, uh, I don't know, it's maybe not working out the way that they thought it would. Well, I think, Diane, to be, be real, it was crazy for the PGA Tour to think that every top player would play the exact same schedule as they wanted them to. I mean, I'm on, give me a break. They're going to have what? 20 designated events or 15 designated events. They want every player to play the same set of events. And what about kids, uh, Tony Finnow or these kids that have spring break or, you know, Scotty Scheffler's tired or, you know, I don't blame Ram. Ram went and held up the whole Mexican tournament, you know, from a publicity standpoint. Now he's too tired to play this week. I, I mean, when I say too tired, Ram could play, but he's trying to set himself up for a what he thinks is a good schedule. And you mentioned that Roy McIlroy might be fine. <clears throat> he's not fine. He was going to get paid, what, $15 million in PIP, and now he's only get, going to get paid 10. So <laughs> I don't think that's a fine, Diane. I think he's still winning 10 million. But uh, yeah, Roy McIlroy started this, Diane, by skipping heritage. And I think the reason uh, Rory uh, had a, has a lot to talk about, uh, very vocal about this whole, you know, emerging elevated events and then of course he missed the cut at the masters very disappointing because he was going for the grand slam then he withdrew from hilton head took a bunch of criticism from a lot of players in the same time live took off in adelaide and had a huge event so rory has just been sitting out of the press he does not want to field questions from all over the place on all these different subjects and of course if i'm in rory's camp i just want him to he just 
I just want to play golf and I don't want to be involved in all the politics. I just want to go back to my favorite course here at Quail, but he's going to have to face the music, Diane, because uh, he is the one that he has put himself as the face of this tour. Yeah, he's involved himself in the politics from day one and um, it makes it then very hard and very <laughs> highlighted when he backtracks a little bit and says, I don't want to be in the spotlight and I don't want to answer questions this week, um, especially teeing it up as the highest ranked player and at a course where he's won three times. He had his debut PGA Tour win at Quail Hollow back in 2010. Um, so... That that's going to be interesting. It's going to be, it's going to be a yeah, a big week for Rory in a lot of ways, as you say. After the Masters was a huge disappointment, uh, the players was a huge disappointment for Rory. So the spotlight is definitely going to be on him this week. However, the spotlight is going to be on a lot of guys because this is still a stacked field on a really iconic golf course. We last saw it in September last year for the President's Cup. So the Wells Fargo Championship, which was won by Max Homa last year, was held at TBC Potomac. So back at Quail, um, Max Homa has won on this course, this tournament before. Um, and we've got a number of past champions, one of which in particular I'm going to be talking about, but we've got Max, Jason Day, Ricky Fowler, James Hahn, uh, JB Holmes, Lucas Glover, Justin Thomas, who won the PGA Championship here in 2017. Um, there's been a lot of big storylines on this golf course. Yeah, and, and to go back to Rory, just for a split second there, Diane, I'm looking at his stats right here. And, you know, he needs a good week this week to kind of re-foot himself for the rest of the season, going back to a course that he knows very well. If anyone can do it at this course, it's Rory. However, you know, I'm looking, he's 170th in putting, Diane. I mean, he's over the last seven weeks, the best he's been in putting is 154th. He's 83rd in bogey avoidance, which tells me that he's making silly mistakes. I mean, Rory McIlroy, when he plays well, when he won here, he was first in bogey avoidance twice when he won this tournament. He was also first in scrambling. His scrambling right now is, you know, he's top 60. Uh, proximity to the hole is 87th. So his game, even though you may be thinking about picking him this week because he plays so well here, but his game, Diane, is not in good shape. However, you do remember how to play a golf course and you do remember what it feels like to stand on a tee and hit a shot that you've hit there before. So we're going to get into all that. But yeah. Rory McIlroy is definitely out of sorts at the moment. Yeah, I mean, um, but if there's ever going to be one, a player that can turn it around in spectacular fashion, it's him. And we've seen that before. When he won the CJ Cup a couple of years ago, um, we had ruled him out completely. And then he went on and he got that win. Um, and also... At this course, he's only three-time champion here. He set the course record twice. So um, if you want to take a risk with Rory this week, then this would be the place to do it. I'm not going to be doing so. And from what you've said, I don't think you are either. We've got a lot of great players to talk about. Um, you know, as I said, a lot of good storylines with the the field right now with how guys have been playing guys that are really emerging and moving up the ranks and we've been really looking hard at the stat pattern when it comes to playing this course i mean you know it inside out it's a, a huge iconic golf course and um, played as the fifth toughest on the pga tour in 2021 as i said last year they didn't have the wales fargo championship here but what really stands out to you about quail hollow well, I think it's the <clears throat> I think I think it's the length of the course, Diane. It's a very big course. Uh, we know that the Green Mile. It's named the last three holes. Very long, sixteenth hole with water on the left side. Seventeen, of course, is this par three that goes across the water, some two hundred plus yards, and then eighteen, of course, is this monster par four back up the hill. But really, when you start to get on a big golf course with fast greens, almost like Augusta National, Diane, where you have a lot of undulation, it's if you're not driving it in the fairway, you can't really get the ball onto the portion of the green where you actually can play the game correctly. So when I think about how do you play Quail Hollow and, and all the statistics of all the past champions that have won at Quail Hollow have done the same thing. They've driven the ball well, they've scrambled well, and they've been able to have bogey avoidance. And what what does all that mean? Well, when you take a player like Rory McIlroy, who's won this tournament three times, we know how good Rory drives it. 
can he miss the green in the exact correct spot that he actually can get up and down? And if you're not playing well and you see some of these odds, Diane, of some of these good players, they're dropping off the board. They go from, you know, 40 to one for a guy like Tom Kim all the way to five and 600 to one for other top players like Patton Kazire and, and uh, JT Post. And they, the Vegas knows that if you can't do a few skill sets on this course, you have no chance. Now, you don't have to putt unbelievable to win this tournament if you hit it like JT or Rory or Max Honma. However, it's all about getting in position off the tee. Further the better, of course, but negotiating these big undulating greens, Diane. If you're if you're not close to the hole at all, you can't make a putt. You can't you can't make a score at all. So Pretty easy in my mind to handicap. I've taken those three, three statistics, driving, uh, total driving, Diane, scrambling, and I've taken bogey avoidance, which I sort of, I think of those three as a golf IQ. How does it, how, what does a golf IQ mean? Well, you want a guy that plays good golf, but he knows where to miss the, sh knows where to miss the shot on a particular hole so he can get up and down. He knows not to make a seven or a six. <laughs> Think Tiger Woods when you think IQ. Uh, maybe not think of IQ when you think of John Daly, where he goes for everything. So I've taken those three stats, Diane, and I've looked at the players that are doing well in those three stats over the last seven weeks on tour, and I've come up with what I think is a pretty good model for this week. And the whole golf IQ thing seems to be even more important when it comes to these major venues. Um, and, you know, we've... we've Quail Hollow hosted the, the PGA in 17. It's going to host it again in 2025. We saw it for the President's Cup. You know, when you draw comparisons to Quail, you look at other big major courses like Tory Pines. Augusta National is always the one that um, that people say that th this course is maybe most like. And their golf IQ is never more important than it is when you're playing Augusta National. So, you know, is it a case that guys can almost figure out this course and, and the ones that have that kind of intelligence when it comes to mapping their way around Quail Hollow are the ones that consistently do well here? Yeah, and, you know, we've got all the top players, so it's very hard. I mean, the average score that wins at Quail is like 12 and a half under par over the last how many tournaments they've had at this, at this course. So four under each day is the leader, but the, the average score for the tour players, Diane, is high. It's over par, so the cuts are usually even one over. So a very difficult course. So the, the leader kind of pulls away as we go along here. So we're looking for superior strikers, superior drivers of the ball that get the ball into these long holes. I mean, think 18, think 17. Who can stand up on the tee and just knock a five iron and right up there in the middle of the green without any problems at all? Yeah. Um, we got to have guys that are in form. And, you know, as you said, we've got most of the good players here. Finau's playing well. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I think this course always gives up the guy who's playing the best golf. Yeah. And you talk about 18, um, the Green Mile, obviously one of the toughest closing stretches. 18 is one of the best finishing holes that we see the guys play because there's so much drama. And there's that tiny little stream that goes up the left and the amount of havoc that that has caused. You know, you've seen absolute meltdowns. Um, I was talking to my brother about it the other day and he said that one year he was playing um, with Phil Mickelson. It was the first time he played with Phil it was on the Saturday Phil was leading and then he got to 18 hit it in the water I think he like triple bogeyed or quadruple bogeyed the hole um, and and 18 really can be the game changer well if you want to think how dangerous 18 is Diane think about David Toms when he won this tournament at Quell uh, I think he had a five or six shot lead on the 18th tee and I think he finished up in the water he shanked it over into the trees, back into the water. I think he finished up making like an eight of, or, or quintuplet bogey and still won the tournament on the very last hole. He, he blew up and made like a nine. Fortunately for enough for him, he had a, a big enough lead. But it's not over on this course until you get through that green mile. I tell you, that, uh, that trophy would have felt a little bit sweeter <laughs> for David Toms that year. And I'm sure he was sweating. <laughs> yeah, YouTube, YouTube that one and have a look at uh, David Toms' final hole in, in Quail Hollow oh when he won. God. 
<laughs> okay, well, we're going to make our picks this week. We have an outright favorite, a one to watch, and a dark horse. And, you know, as you said at the top of the show, with these designated events, with such a stacked field at the top, you look a little bit further down and you've got some really tasty odds. You mentioned JT Poston, 150 to one this week. Um, so there's a lot of guys that you're going to look at who are maybe, you know, they have great course history here. They're playing well. You're seeing them in contention on those leaderboards week after week and you're going to get a really good price for them this week. So um, even the guys at the top, if you're staying away from the absolute favorites, then um, we've got some really good odds. Uh, do you want to go first or do you want me to kick it off with my outright fave? Uh, yeah, no, you go ahead. Okay, okay. Well, my guy is a, a past champion here and he's one of these guys that um, hit good odds this week at 25 to 1. I actually found him at 28 to 1. I'm going to pick Jason Day as my outright favorite. And again, not a big shock because I have been picking him so much and I'm going to keep picking him until he wins because... It's got to be around the corner. Um, with Jason Day, I mean, brilliant past history here. Um, he's won in 2018. Um, he's only ever finished outside the top 25 at Quail Hollow once. And in his five appearances at this tournament, he's got that win and another top 10 finish. So plays well here, but he's also playing great this season. And this is what I've been talking about so much. Um, seven top 20 finishes in eight starts for Jason Day this year, which is just unbelievable. Um, you know, he's got great numbers. Uh, we've been talking about the the trends and looking at him he's 13th in putting 24th in approach um he's great off the tee right now so jason day there's not really a flaw in his game and if i am not on him for the win that is definitely going to come at some point this season i'm going to be so mad so back to a course that he loves when he's playing great it's all coming together and this could be the big week for jason day yeah jason day of course what do you think of when you think of Jason Day, Diane? Great driver of the ball. He has that straight arm chipping action. We know he can get the ball up and down. He's got a nice IQ. He's playing good golf this year and hasn't won. There's another guy that I'm thinking about, Diane, that also hasn't won. Matthew Fitzpatrick just won at Hilton Head, and he graded out the best. He's the one on the most rise. So the only reason I'm not picking Matthew this week is because he just won. And he could do it again. Yes, he could. But I'm riding a guy that I've been kind of watching, and that's Patrick Cantlay. Now, he doesn't have much history on this course. In fact, he hasn't done anything on this course. But Cantlay is very stoic competitor. I don't think that's going to affect him. He was at the President's Cup, and I don't know what his record was, but I don't care because he has the history of the qualifications to do well in this tournament. He's an incredible player. Obviously, he's I'm going to give you a couple of the stats that I like about Cantlay this week. He's bogey avoidance. He's in the top 10. He's in the top 15 in putting. He's a great scrambler. He's a great thinker. And he's number two in driving the golf ball. So you have to – at Quail, uh, uh, at Quail Diane, um, you have to have the skill set to do it. We've seen so much with Rory and JT and Honma. You know, Jordan Spieth was 5-0. and oh, at this tournament in the President's Cup. Is he driving it good enough? Is he driving it as good as Cantlay? No, it didn't grade out just quite as high. There's a bunch of guys I'd like to take, but I'm sticking with Cantlay this week. I think he's going to win this season, and I'm thinking about it right here. Okay, okay. Right, well, I'm going to take Jason Day as my outright favourite, and you're going with Patrick Cantlay. Jason Day, uh, about 25 to 1, and Cantlay, uh, definitely, I think he's the, the absolute favourite this week at 12 to 1. So, I like it. Uh, yeah, I think Finn, yeah, him and Finn. Yeah, and Rory's seven and a half to one. So even though Rory has not been playing great, we haven't seen him for a little while um, since the Masters, Rory is still the absolute favourite. So there you go. So as you know, Diane, there's a ton of good players but uh, playing this week. This is my one to watch. And <clears throat> my good friend Brian Harmon has the most incredible record at this tournament, Diane. I think over the last 10 years, he has, I'm going to read them out, 9th, 18th, 24th, 74th, 1st, 35th, 65th, 10th, 57th, cut one time. He's like a 90% chance to make the cut at this event. 
But that's not the reason I'm picking him to watch, Diane. He's playing. He's having a great season. Um, he's number two in bogey avoidance. He's number four in scrambling. He's number 18 in proximity to the hole. He knows how to play this golf course. And it's so easy this week to overlook the skill set because it's not glamorous to pick someone like Brian Harmon because he's kind of a plotter, left-hander, medium-range hitter. He's 24th in total driving. But, Diane, I've got a little dial over here on the side that I've had to turn for form and I've had to turn for experience on this course, like Rory McIlroy. So I'm watching Brian Harmon, the lefty, this week. Okay, I like it. And uh, and when we did our re-ranking, Brian Harmon came out as what sixth from the top, fifth from the top. So he's a he's a great pick and great odds for him at sixty to one. My guy is also sixty to one. And you know when you think of Quail Hollow, you think of like this classic, prestigious American golf course. And um, those are definitely words you would use to describe my guy as well. Kashmir Keith, Keith Mitchell is going to be my one to watch this week. Now, um, looking at Keith's stats, he is first in total driving on the PGA Tour right now, which is phenomenal. He's 25th. I know, I know, I know. I wanted to pick him too. Go ahead, go ahead. These numbers are so, so good. Um, so if you're 25th in putting and you're first in total driving, you have it. Like, you can put together four fantastic rounds and get this tournament won. Um, he also has really good course history here as well. Last time the Wells Fargo was held at this course in 2021, he finished third, fell away a little bit on the Sunday, but I mean, shot a 66 on Saturday. I think it was low round of the day on Saturday. Um, and in 2019, he finished eighth. So two amazing finishes already at this course, combined with those stats. He's got three top six finishes already this season. You had picked him and Sung JM for the Zurich Classic and they were in it until the very end. But I love Love, love, love Keith Mitchell this week. He's an absolute ball striker. And I think that, um, yeah, as I said at the top, I just think when you think about Keith and you think about this course, they're just maybe a match made in heaven. I like Keith Mitchell too, but I'll tell you why I like him the most, because he's 142nd in scrambling, Diane. But all I see on Instagram is how hard he works on his short game. So he's very aware that he has a gap in his game that he has to be fixed. And I was watching last week on Instagram uh, him working on his wedge game and explaining what he's working on. He's very happy with everything um, at, you know, going on with his short game. So he's, he's looking at the same thing I am, 142nd in, in scrambling. So he fixes that, Diane. He's going to go straight to the moon. And, and you're right. I mean, Keith Mitchell's number one driver of the golf ball on tour. Hardly anyone knows that. Hardly anyone knows that he smashes it. He hits it almost as far as Rory McIlroy. Hard to believe he's got such a nice, smooth action. My son, Sam, he he loves watching Keith Mitchell because he's a great dresser and he wears cool clothes. So it looks a lot different than everyone else. But I'm with you. I'm on the Keith Mitchell train. We talk about what a great driver he is. He has been leading the tour. I mean, we look back at the last six tournaments and we're going as far back as the players right now. He's been first in total driving from the players onwards. So it's not yeah. like he had a freak good week um, at the Zurich or whatever. And like all of a sudden, yay, that he's at the top. He has been number one for such a long time. This guy is playing great right now and coming to a course that he loves. So, yeah. Well, and think about what you would do at this tournament uh, with a great drive off every hole. I mean, think of 18 with a great drive. He's the best. You know, think of Rory playing this course. I mean, you know, going back to Rory for just a second, I have this other uh, stat, Diane, will I call it the pop-out factor. What what does it take for someone to pop out of their current stats? There's top five, you know, there's five stats we're looking at this week. Rory McIlroy would almost have to improve all five of his stats 50% to, to be in the same game as some of these players we're talking about on this show. Can he do it? I don't even know if it's possible, Diane, for, for anyone to pop out that much. We're going to find out. If anyone can do it, it's Rory. But let's keep an eye on the pop out, the pop out metric we're going to use this week. We're introducing Diane. <laughs> I love that. No one else is using that. Um, and then our dark horses. So over 100 to 1, you know the deal. It's very easy to find some good dark horses this week because we have so many high odds um, in this 
stacked field. I'm not <laughs> deviating from anything that I've talked about already, Diane. I'm sticking with Brendan Todd, who is the best ball striker with the with a small tee shot on the whole PGA Tour. He works uh, with my friend Bradley Hughes. Um, plays fantastic golf. He's 50th in the FedEx. He's 111th in, in total driving, mainly because he doesn't hit it that far. He doesn't have a lot of speed. But, I mean, watch out for some of this other stuff here. Bogey avoidance, top 30. Putting average, top 15. Scrambling, top 25. Proximity to the hole, we talked about at the top of the show. Can you hit the ball up into these big undulating greens where you actually have a chance to make a birdie? Because if you're off into the rough and now you've got to lay up into the corner and you've got to negotiate these big swaley greens that are super fast, can't do anything. Brendan Todd, top 20 in proximity to the hole. Uh, 150 to 1, excuse me, 150 to 1. I'm going to take Brendan Todd all day for like a top 20 finish or, or better this week, Diane. Okay. Um, I have, I've got two dark horses. One I'm really going to go with, but I want to mention Joel Damon first up um, because he has amazing course history here. Um, he has one top 10. Well, he's made four cuts here. He's only missed one cut in the five times that he's played. And we finished runner up in 2019 and um, just finished outside the top 10 at the Zurich. So maybe an upturn in his game coming back to a course that he loves and has played well on before. So Joel Damon at 150 to one, but I'm going with a guy who lives close by in Charlotte um, and a guy that maybe has a little bit of added fuel to his fire this week, Mackenzie Hughes at 200 to one. Now, Mackenzie Hughes, Canadian, he, there was a, a bit of chatter around him and the President's Cup last year, and ultimately he didn't get a pick to play. Obviously hugely disappointed because he lives so close by. Um, and I'm sure this one was on his radar for a long time. That motivated him the following week to go on and win the Sanderson Farms Championship. So fantastic for him. Now he's back to the venue of that President's Cup that he missed out on, his local tournament, and surely he's got something that he wants to go out there and prove. Doesn't have a great track record here. He's played it five times and he's missed the cut four of them. But, you know, when we look at the stats, scrambling is definitely his best stat. Um, as you said, it's going to be an important one this week. Um, in the Wells Fargo last year, he finished in the top 10. It was at a different course, but still, you know, the good vibes heading back to the tournament. So I like Mackenzie Hughes this week to go out there and get something done. And uh, he's having a good season at 200 to one. I like him as my dark horse. Yeah, very difficult this week, as you know, for... I don't want to say the average tour player down the list to push through these top 30 because we know that the, the top 30 or so best players in the world are going to be there and, they, and they're, they are superior. They're better players. I want to speak one minute, Diane, about uh, our defending champion, Max Homer, who won last year up at TPC Avenel, who's won on this course as well. We talked about the pop-out uh, metric a minute ago. Now we may have to talk about the baby metric because I looked at Honma's stats you know, he's still top five in putting. He's about 20% worse in uh, his categories over the last six weeks. He's had a bad run. I think it's probably all to do with the baby Diane he's had in the last, oh, let's see here, uh, one, two, three, four, five weeks. He's he's only finished tie for 43rd, had two missed cuts, has not played well. Uh, he's trended back a little bit. But to me, you know, when you think of Honma, the way he played out on the West Coast, straight hitter with a little power fade, great putter, just very consistent, very straight, perfect course for him. It's whether or not you can ride that, Diane, because he's in the same boat as Rory. He's going to need some pop out to get back in there. Uh, the baby factor, Joel Damon's another one with the baby. I can, I can tell you all. We're not sure there. which way the, the baby, the baby deal can go both ways. It can give you a boost and and do something great, and then it can drag you down because you're not getting any sleep or you got the baby on the road. I mean, we don't know. Yeah, um, it's been working good for Austin Smotherman. His baby girl, I think, is two months old, and he had a great week last week. He's been playing well. Ben Ann, another one, had a baby not long ago, and he's been on the rise. Um, but yeah, Joel Damon and Max Homa, 
they're really good friends. There was a bit of banter between the two of them on Twitter when they were on the plane flying to Charlotte. Um, they're both new dads. They've both played really well at this course. Actually, the year that Max won is the year that Joel finished runner up. So um, yeah, that could that could work in their favor as well this week. But yeah, Max's little boy is I think four days older than my son. So I always keep an eye on how his little boy is progressing. And <laughs> I saw a picture the other day. So we're getting more sleep. So hopefully. <laughs> Maxes too. We we didn't talk about Tom Kim this week, who uh, you know has been taught a lot of golf by Jordan Spieth on how to pitch the ball. Had a great Presidents Cup here. Also having a great uh, Presidents Cup here, um, where we, we we talked about um, Jordan Spieth five and zero. Oh, Sam Burns is here this week. Cameron Young's here. Um, Colin Morikawa, Hatton, some JM, Ricky Fowler, defend, uh, past champions, working with Butch Harmon, still on his comeback trail. All of these guys, Diane, know exactly what they've got to do at Quail Hollow. And we talk, we didn't talk about Justin Thomas, who's won the PGA here. All about knocking it down the fairway and then got to be superior iron play. And when it comes to the Sunday round, Think Rory McIlroy at his best. I mean, he makes the course look easy. And why is that? Because he hits the ball so damn well and so solid. He gets on in there to where all these pins are cut in these crazy undulating green com complexes, Diane. And everyone else is just fighting for crumbs and, unless you can hit the ball at the Quail Hollow. Someone else I love this week at 80 to 1 is Siwoo Kim. Um, he hasn't played this tournament at this course since 2016, but he had a great President's Cup last year. Remember, he beat Justin Thomas in the Sunday singles and he was shooshing everyone. And um, yeah. so he's going to be pumped up for a good week this week, too. Yeah, and, and, and just to the, the, the finalize this whole thing, remember that they had a different routing at the President's Cup. They finished on hole number nine. Uh, I think 11 was 17 and not, you know, anyway, uh, we didn't see the green mile in its entirety for the president's cup, but we're, we're talking about, you know, good drive and a five iron to the ninth hole, good drive and a five or a six iron up 18, five iron on 17, long demanding holes, Diane. So we've made our choices and that's what we're going with. Driving the ball, bogey avoidance and scrambling is the key to this tournament. Uh, right, well we're excited to see it. I like when we have the designated events when we know that it's going to play tough. So as you say, the cut's probably going to be over par. Um, winning score on average around about 12 under. So it's. Uh, I like these weeks. I look forward to these weeks, especially after what we saw last week at the Mexico Open. Me too. We are going to miss John Rahm and Scotty Scheffler who aren't here. They add a lot to the tournament, but we got all we got almost everybody else and and that's the key exactly exactly and uh, i don't know if sheffler is signed up next week it's the at t biden nelson um, in i think he is i think he is okay so yeah. we'll see him back in action then right thank you so much for watching the tour report and uh, yeah we will be back next week to talk about the biden nelson on the pga tour the sg tour golf gaming app the place for you to compete and win cash on PGA Tour events. The SG Tour is a golf experience like no other, with games designed by golf professionals. You can play single day games and tournament long contests each week. It's easy to get involved. Join or create a game for you and your buddies. Pick four players and follow along with the action. And if you need some help with your picks, We've got you covered with our weekly handicapping show, The Tour Report, and exclusive content with our PGA Tour players. Join the fun and win money on the SG Tour, available in the App Store.